I decided we would start this week's SmackDown review a little bit differently. Um, just wanted to try and to talk about something here for a moment or two. Um, I know some of you have been asking about summer. Here is summer, um, especially with the turn of events involving Roman Reigns and how he has become now our top babyface and our hero in professional wrestling. And Summer's been down with Roman since day one. Like, she's legit. She's OG. She's real. Back to the days when she was a little pupper whopper asking Smokey about having slumber parties and everything. Um, some of you may be wondering why you haven't seen Summer on camera as much the past few weeks. So, wanted to give you a little update on her. Um, I think it was about maybe a month ago or so she started to develop a a lump on her underbelly. Um, it ended up in the course of about two weeks from the time it discovered it to actually being able to get her to a vet to actually get it checked out. Um, it had grown to about the size of a lime. It's the best way I could describe it. Um, it was pretty big and sizable and hanging down. Um, so took her in. Uh, they said we need to set her up for surgery immediately in order to uh, get rid of this lump and see what else is going on. Uh, so she had surgery about two weeks ago. I hope you don't mind, Summer. I'm going to show everybody so they don't think I'm working them or anything like that. Um, but you can see on her underbelly right here, you can see where they shaved, and you can kind of see the scar. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I didn't mean to do that. I know. I was just trying to show everybody. Um, but basically had to take the lump out, had to uh, do a triple mastectomy, um, had to do the full kind of hysterectomy that you would do when you spay a dog. Um, you know, it was a little bit of a surprise, admittedly, because she is only, you know, at seven and a half, so it felt like a little early to start having uh, these types of issues or concerns. Had to send the lump off to get a biopsy on it. Uh, got the results of the biopsy this week. Uh, found out that it was a grade two mammary carcinoma, which means it was a malignant tumor. Um, so... We have to go in to the vet actually Monday to get her staples out because it's been, like I said, just, just about two weeks since the surgery and then set up an appointment for the oncologist uh, to find out uh, whether or not it has spread or if it's in her lymph nodes or anything else. Good news um, that we had from the surgery a couple weeks ago is that um, we didn't see any other lumps, any other things around like her other mammary glands. Her nipples, folks, okay, in that area. Um, there was nothing else that they saw, like, inside of her reproductive organs before they had taken them out as part of the hysterectomy, part of her spaying process. Uh, X-rays came back clean, so there was nothing in the lungs. Um, there were basically three grades of mammary carcinoma. Uh, she had grade two, so kind of in the middle. Um, what that means is, is that she did have malignant tumor, but we don't know at this point. I don't know at this point if it has spread or not. Um, so that's part of the reason why she hasn't really been on camera as much. Been, you know, she's been kind of medicated the past couple of weeks, obviously recovering. You know, it took a lot out of her poor baby. Um, so uh, that said, we'll find out as we go along here in the next couple of weeks, won't we? What we're looking at and what we're facing down. Uh, but we are going to channel our Romans, aren't we? Yes, ma'am, we will certainly are. That's your Samoan stud muffin. Mm -hmm. We are going to channel Roman here, and we're going to fight this, and we're going to fight this like a mother lover, and we're going to win. Isn't that right? We're going to be hashtag summer strong, and we're going to win this. Got to put everything into this, everything behind this, because, you know... Kind of mostly all I got now, huh? It's you and Piglet and the cats. That's pretty much it. So, yeah, we're gonna fight this. We're gonna we're gonna channel Roman's courage and Roman's strength, and by God, we're gonna fight against this every single day, and we are going to win, aren't we, Summer? We most certainly are. Yes, we are. So, for those of you that wondered what's been going on, where's Summer been? Why hasn't she been on camera? Well, this is why um, it sucks. I can't tell you it doesn't suck, uh, but we're not going to get too down right now. Yeah, this is my baby. She's been here for seven years, um, and she's going to keep being here. So 
You want to stay with me when I talk about Romy's for a moment or two? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. He can give you the silent treatment because she's snuggling with her daddy, but, um, you know, appreciate any kind thoughts that anybody will have or any kind words anybody have. Uh, biggest message I could give to any of you is um, when you have time, like especially if you have female dogs, make sure you get them spayed at a younger age so you don't encounter these types of issues. Um, it certainly has uh, come as a big surprise, but we're going to get through this. Um, we absolutely are. Now, I don't know about you, but Roman Reigns starting off SmackDown, like, you know, this is perfect for us. Because Summer sits there every week with me, and she watches SmackDown. She snuggles next to me as we watch Roman. And, you know, the biggest thing we've got to ask, number one, oh, yeah, let it all out. I know you're CB. The medication's got you CB. Uh, but does Drew really want to get froggy here? I mean, Summer, does Drew really want to get froggy? No, he doesn't. What's that? Oh, yes, that's right. I mean... His ex-wife beat his ass. What the hell does he think the tribal chief is going to do, Summer? I mean, really. What does he think the tribal chief is going to do to him? And then when you think about Paul Heyman and the fact that Romans made Paul Heyman basically into a backup singer, and Drew's sitting there trying to talk trash. Yep, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, this is you're more important than anything else. Um, what are you, what are you breathing heavy for? She's excited because we're talking about Roman. We're going to go with that. Um, but the line about nobody watching Raw, that was a fatality. And, and Drew at that point kept going like, you're done, dude. It's over. And we also appreciate how Roman let Jay get into a trouble just, a, yeah, that's right, get into trouble just a little bit, but then, oh, yes. When it got to be too much, the big dog stepped in and let everybody know what the fuck the deal was, and that, that was enough of that crap, just like a big brother, just like the tribal chief, just like the head of the family would do. You know, and this, this is why we love Romans. This is why Romans is the number one baby face in professional wrestling today, period. And this is why we are drawing our inspiration from him in this battle, because we're going to be summer strong, and we're going to beat this, aren't we, baby? Yeah. I had to go and get Summer kind of situated, get her comfortable, give her her nightly medicine so she could get some rest. So we got a big day tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. Um, anyways, let's move on as much as I can. Talk about the Intercontinental Championship match. Like, this is crap. This is absolute crap. This is a conspiracy against Sami Zayn. He's our legit Intercontinental Champion, and yet time and time again, the man's trying to conspire against him, and I don't get it. Why? Like, now they're throwing him out there and expecting him to defend against Apollo Crews with, like, an hour's notice? Like, Sammy should be upset. This is unfair. This is absolute garbage and crap. And yet again, being asked to work in these unsafe ring conditions. Like, here is Sammy Zane yet again exposing to you and the entire world just the unsafe working conditions that you put him in, not to mention the fact the unfavorable unfair situation that you put him into, only giving him about an hour's notice to know what his opponent is, and you wonder why he ends up winning that way. Well, you know what? If the ring crew was better at their job, we wouldn't have to worry about it. Now, would we? But they're not. And yet, here is the Intercontinental Champion thinking about the everyman because he is everybody's champion, trying to look out for everybody, and the ring crew just doesn't learn their lesson. They just don't listen. And all the while, Sami Zayn finds a way to persevere and overcome and remain our Intercontinental Champion like a true great would. I'll admit, I'm kind of a roller coaster a little bit when it comes to Sasha Banks. I run very hot and cold on her. That is absolutely true, and that's fair to say. It's hard to always get a read on her with me or how I think about her as a performer and as a character. I will say this, is I think some of her outfits recently, just kind of the way she's presented herself, she's looked really freaking hot, beyond question, absolutely. Like, I have no doubts about that. But when I look at her in this form of character and on the mic, like, her delivery is just bad. It's very flat. It's monotone. It doesn't really have a consistency of cadence. Like, the best thing about this here was at least it was short. But maybe this is a thing of because this doesn't really come natural to her, that it's more heavily written out or scripted for her to compare to some other ones. 
uh, because these are not really boss type promos and she's not coming across looking like a boss here and I'm not really huge on that like you're saying one thing but you're really another yeah these promos since this kind of character turned by Bailey specifically they have sucked like the interviews the promos They've been really, really bad, at least the ones that I have seen. Most interesting thing to me about this whole segment is, is Bailey appears, but then Carmelo comes out of nowhere and attacks Sasha, and then Bailey disappears. Where the hell did she go? What's that all about? Are Bailey and Carmella in cahoots here? Like, what, 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 what in the world? What in the world? Like I said, the best thing about it is this attack by oh, Carmella. Ugh. At least I'll say this. It cut Sasha's mic time short, and that was a benefit to me and surely all of you. It's really aggravating to me that they got to trot Otis out there to work with this fool. It's an even bigger shame to me that they got to associate Robert Roode with this crap. And what's worst of all is you've got fans pissing and moaning about protecting his finisher? That finisher? Whose finisher, you ask? <laughs> Dolph Ziggler! The best thing about this match is that Otis squashed his ass. The worst thing about this match is that he didn't squash him sooner. It's ridiculous. Like, we're almost to 2021 now. How the hell is Dolph Ziggler still a thing? Here we are, Friday Night Smackdown, November 13th, 2020. The final chapter in this storied rivalry. Until you turn the page to the next chapter. It's Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins in a no hold barred match. No holds barred. Easy for me to say. You know, when I look at this, like, I understand I missed a lot of it because it was on Raw. But the bits and pieces I saw that I really, really liked, I thought it was a great showcase for Dominic and he came across very well. But there's always one thing that bothered me about this whole thing, especially with the turn it's taken in recent weeks. Like, the unbelievable thing about this story is that Aaliyah and Buddy Murphy, not that they would be together, not that they would be a thing, it's that you're expecting me to, to buy into this. Like, if you want me to buy into this story, have Ray and Dominic embrace Buddy Murphy instead of being against him, because you know how crap works in the real world. When the family is against the dude, the lady is only going to dig her heels in more. That's just reality. You got to go reverse psychology. It's that simple. You got to embrace him and welcome him with open arms because when you do that, she will want nothing to do with him because now she doesn't have that over her family. She can't rebel. She can't be different. That's it. I, guess, I don't know why that bothers me so much. It's like, what's the family accepts you? The lady don't love you no more. When the family hates you, like they love you long time all over the place. I'm just saying. What's interesting here is everybody was expecting Aaliyah, I think, to turn on her pops, which maybe was the direction people wanted this to go and wanted this to have a different angle, but then that means you have a reason for this to continue. I don't really know. Uh, but instead, Buddy Murphy turned. And Ray accepted him as Buddy Murphy's the one that turned on the Messiah, Seth Rollins. He's the one that made the big save. You know, and Ray apparently begrudgingly has accepted him into the family. You know, so by the time you get to whatever stupid wedding angle they're going to come to, you know, she's not going to want him anymore. Because now Ray and Dominic have accepted him. Now that, I believe, that I could get behind. Because that's reality. That makes sense. A match was really good, though. You know, there's always that piece of, don't tell me it's going to be the last chapter when I have overwhelming odds to believe that it absolutely is not going to be the last chapter. Maybe, hopefully, it will be. And maybe this leads to Murphy and Rollins breaking off and doing their own thing, which seems to be the right thing to do, whatever. Uh, but you'd have to think they're going to be some type of association here at Survivor Series, wouldn't you? Um, a good match. My right, team wins, I guess. Some of you might have wanted to go the different direction with Aaliyah turning. And frankly, I can't blame you. It feels like that would have been the better thing to do. But they went with the yay, happy endings and warm feelings, and we gotta set up a crappy wedding angle. Hooray! One woman Survivor Series four way match. It was really weird because they made a deal out of Chelsea Green debuting, and then she's almost instantly gone out of the match. And you're like, where the hell did she go? What the hell happened? Well, you find out later, apparently she broke her wrist. 
So, it felt like it was kind of out of left field that they were going to have Liv Morgan win this, but did they end up calling an audible? I would think that this wouldn't have been the design all along. Like, this was just really, really strange. The other big thing is it makes you wonder, why is Natalia still a thing? Like, seriously? She's the less annoying version of... <laughs> Dolph Ziggler! And I said less annoying, and I said it right. Good. Main event, an unsanctioned match between Jey Uso and Drew McIntyre. Another week, yet another main event SmackDown spot for Jey Uso. Hashtag, thank you, Roman. <laughs> thank you, Roman. And, and you know, this is what a tribal chief does. Like, this is what a loving, caring patriarch of the family has to do. Like, they've got to let... Sometimes these folks go out there in their family and learn the hard way. And Jay was kind of sort of doing okay, but Roman comes out at an opportune time and wants to make sure that he delivers a message to Jay. He told Jay to make sure that Drew understands. And Jay was doing that. See, here's what happens. Jay Uso, when you listen, good things happen. When you don't listen like you didn't hear, you let up and you stopped assaulting Drew. You stood up. You opened up the opportunity to lose because you're hard-headed, because you don't want to damn listen to Roman Reigns. You've kind of sort of fallen in line, but not totally and completely. Like, how many times does the tribal chief have to send the message to the Uso penitentiary? Jesus! He just won't learn. He's just so damn hard-headed. And as a result, what did he do? <laughs> he ate that L. And all I gotta say is this. Like, you're trying to pump up Drew and Roman. Like, you know better than that. Come on. Drew, Drew could even handle himself against his ex-wife. The hell makes you think he's gonna be able to take on the tribal chief? Ridiculous! Well, I thought Summer was asleep, but apparently she wasn't. She heard me talking about her Romies, and she just had to come in and get some more face time. You know, Smokey would be very proud of you of how you get your camera time whenever you can. Uh, but anyways, that was the SmackDown review for this week. We certainly enjoyed the show. You know, Roman at the beginning, Roman at the end. The only thing I think it could have used... What is that? Yes, that's right. More Roman. Um... But thank you, everyone, for watching again. Hope everybody's excited to see Summer. Um, as hopefully she starts to feel better in the weeks to come, I'll try to incorporate her into more of the videos, which will be great news for some of you and others of you. I don't really care whether you like it or not. It's going to happen. Um, but got a big fight ahead of us, I think. But we're going to do this. And we're going to say, stay Summer strong. And we are going to do Roman proud, aren't we, baby? Yes. All right, guys, we'll see you later.